Hey y'all, uh, Mark Allen here with Four Color Commentary. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I wanted to bring to you another video of some affordable firsts that are some really, um, really fun characters from a fun book uh, that just aren't, they're not burning up the, um, uh, burning up the back issue prices and back issue, they're not bringing any back issue heat right now, which is great because uh, they're fun to read. They're great books. And it comes from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1 from the early 90s. I think 1991 is when the title started. This was, uh, this was a title written and drawn by Jim Valentino, uh, who went on to uh, work for Image um, with, it, for, with his Shadowhawk uh, uh, you know, character and property. And so um, anyway, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy was a fun book because it was set in the far future and you saw a lot of different versions of uh, Marvel characters. And it was so fresh and so new in a sense that you didn't, it didn't feel, I don't remember a single time that maybe toward the end, but I don't remember very often that uh, anything felt forced because in the future, you would expect there to be future versions of uh, well-established Marvel heroes and uh, characters. And so I want to talk about a few affordable firsts that we find in the series. And um, these are just really fun appearances. Uh, in this case, the uh, daughter of a well-established, well-known um, Marvel villain. And this is a character called Malevolence, who is the an energy vampire, I believe, uh, if I remember, if I recall. I'm getting ready to uh, reread this series. Uh, I am missing some issues, but I've got to, enough to read a a good, a goodly amount in in a, in a row there, but uh, this is the daughter of Mephisto, and you could probably tell that just from her appearance. But Malevolence is her name. She is a uh, daughter of Mephisto, an energy vampire, and very quite powerful. And so, just kind of neat, um, neat, affordable first there, daughter of Mephisto. Okay, and then um, that's issue number seven. Issue number eight contains, and this one I'm going to go ahead and open up. This one contains the uh, first appearance of, I'm going to say, I have to say, a daughter, not the daughter, of Wolverine. And uh, her name is Rancor. And she is, uh, uh, she appears on the on the last page, a very kind of very, uh, obviously very reminiscent of Wolverine. Uh, the costume, the colors, the hair, uh, the claws, which are actually are finger, in her case, are fingernails. But uh, very formidable, and uh, in fact, um, that, that's her first appearance, and then her first full appearance is in issue nine. I want to, I'm going to take that out and and show you some panels from that because it uh, it is very, it is cool in the sense that there's some neat imagery as they tell a story about a uh, in 1991 it would have been a future, uh, this would have been I guess 92 by now on this issue, but uh, it would have been a future story that had not yet happened for the X-Men and uh, where they had gone off planet, off the earth and set up set up a, a, a civilization elsewhere. And I'm gonna show you just some, as they're telling the story, you see some, some images there of the X-Men as the story is being told, uh, as Charlie 27 looks like he's telling the story. And then you have an image here, um, let's see, let me see, right here on the bottom of Wolverine, uh, leading a group of mutants, uh, un, you know, unspecified group of mutants. Here's a one that looks like the angel at first glance, but then you notice it's a girl, long blonde hair there in the back, and with the shape of a girl, you know, and and Wolverine and kind of a partially his costume and kind of a cheetah skin uh, thrown over him. Okay, so so kind of cool stuff there, and it just told you know this this was one of the um, appeals of part of the appeal of this this um, title was it told these really cool futuristic stories um, with Marvel heroes. There's a very, very frightening uh, image of Rancor there. She's uh, she's on the attack, okay? So, um, again, you never know why fandom latches on to one character and not another, uh, and it doesn't really matter. Comics are about reading enjoyment, uh, enjoying the story, enjoying the art, and that kind of thing. So who cares why exactly, uh, what characters they... they um, uh, decide to are popular or great or whatever. Um, 
what you know if something's not doing if something's not burning up the back issues this means it's cheaper for you to acquire it and read it and enjoy it now the last character i was going to show you just to give you an idea of uh how much fun this series was this is a this was the first future version of the ghost rider okay now a little bit different it's unclear uh what his connection is they never went into a a lot i don't believe about his background I do know he is a where whereas the the uh, the first you know the first couple of Ghost Riders had human hosts. Uh, the second one was Danny Ketch. Um, Johnny Blaze was the first. This one is an alien dude, blue skinned alien dude. He may be a Cree. I don't know. I don't remember. Like I said, I'm getting ready to go back and reread. But it was a name I can't pronounce. But uh, anyway, very very cool looking uh, character there, and. Um, and so, just a neat, uh, uh, you know, neat, there's a, that was his first appearance in issue number 13, his second appearance there in issue number 14. You've probably seen these covers. At one time, when Ghost Rider was all the rage and enjoying a comeback a couple of years ago, uh, this book was kind of uh, on people's radar again, and, and people, it was somewhat in, in semi-high demand, we'll say. Uh, now, it's really, it's it's cooled off. It's cooled way off, and you can get it for fairly cheaply on eBay, and um, and you can find it in cheap boxes as well. I just wanted to share with you, though, a few uh, a few reasons to go after um, this, um, go after this series. There was also another, let's see, there was another character. We'll go ahead and uh, introduce this other character. He's kind of feral. He's kind of a uh, Wolverine-like character, I guess, or more like Puma. Uh, from Spider-Man, Spider-Man villain, but uh, he was called Talon, and uh, it's interesting, I have a nephew named Talon, but uh, anyway, so, but he's not a superhero, and uh, so anyway, there's Talon, and so there were just some really cool um, new characters, uh, also some cool future versions of characters, here you had a, a, a Punisher squad in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy number 18, okay, so Punisher uh, had, had become kind of a, a an icon and and uh, was being you know was being imitated by uh, seemingly a whole society there okay and then um let's see here's a couple others here's another future version of um in, on this guardians of the galaxy number 25 a galactus story a great whole kind of a foily cover there you have a future version of of silver surfer he doesn't have his board anymore but he has the quantum bands and i don't know what that cape is i Again, I'm going to be reading the story. So, uh, anyway. Anyway, uh, fun series. Just a really very fun series. And just for the heck of it, since I'm here, I will tell you, I won't tell you what villain, a well-established Marvel villain at one point, uh, animates the skeleton of Wolverine to attack Rancor, okay, in that beautiful foil cover there. Great story, fun story, okay. And uh, in, in um, Guardians of the Galaxy number 46, um, Major Victory, or Vance Astro, uh, gets uh, a new costume, which looks suspiciously like a uh, symbiote, okay? So, uh, honestly, again, I don't remember the story there. I've shown this one before, but uh, anyway, just a, a little bit to get you, you know, maybe whet your appetite to go look for this this guardians run because here's the thing the vast majority of these guardian books can be found in cheap boxes can be can be got can be acquired easily on ebay and um they're just just for not a lot of money and so uh fun search fun chasing them down uh, i encourage you to do it i encourage you to to go after them and uh you know and and enjoy uh and remember a lot of times on ebay you can, you know as well as I do, you can find entire runs of books, okay? So anyway, just a few, um, just a few first appearances from a series that's a lot of fun, uh, just coming fresh out of the 90s, or fresh out of the 80s, it started in 1991, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1, just a great read, great great fun, at least, for, at least the first 25 or so issues, lots of fun. And so anyway, uh, great Valentino work there, Jim Valentino work. Uh, among others okay so anyway that's it just a, a few more affordable firsts and uh and listen if you haven't uh if you haven't subscribed go ahead and do that uh comment i'd like to hear your comments on your 
on the video. Maybe mention what are some of your favorite future versions of um, of Marvel of Marvel characters. And by the way, I mentioned that that Ghost Rider was the first future Ghost Rider. He was. He predated. That was ninety one. He predated or ninety ninety one or ninety two. He predated uh, uh, Marvel the Ghost Rider twenty ninety nine by two or three years. And so anyway, because he came out in ninety four the first time. But anyway, that's it. Um, thanks for watching Four Color Commentary, and we'll see you next video.